The city of Faustoria is the junction of three counties, Hancock, Seneca, and Wood. It's about 40 miles from Toledo, 90 miles from Columbus, uh, five state routes, and US 23 run through Faustoria. Uh, there's easy access to I-75 and the Ohio Turnpike. It has a municipal airport, uh, but the city's known for its rail system. Hundreds of trains pass through the city every day. It's a great spot for distribution and freight access. Uh, but it's known for a destination for visitors as well. Um, the uh, Faustoria, Faustoria Rail Preservation Society welcomes rail fans at Faustoria Iron Triangle Rail Park and the annual Faustoria Rail Festival. It's known for its glass making history and um, it's not just uh, interesting for visitors, it's an incredible place to live, work, and play. People come there, invest, build a business, and stay because it's an incredible community. Renee Smith, the president of the Faustoria Economic Development Corporation is here to give you a live showcase. Welcome Renee Smith, everybody. Well, good afternoon. My name is Renee Smith, and I am president of the Faustoria Economic Development Corporation. And I'm thrilled to be here this afternoon to share with you what, what we have been doing in preparation for development within our Opportunity Zone. Next slide, please. Our zone is labeled Census Track 1, and it covers a portion of the city of Faustoria and Hancock County in Northwest Ohio. Hancock County as a whole has a population of around 75,000, while the city of Faustoria has a population of about 13,000. We are, as mentioned, in three counties, which makes us pretty unique, but the Hancock County portion of Faustoria is definitely uh, predominantly agriculture. Next slide, please. The image on the screen is of our Opportunity Zone. While we currently have no existing Opportunity Funds and no active projects are currently taking place, what we have done as a community and as a county is identify all available sites and buildings within our zone. We have developed literature with all information, including acreage, pricing, utilities, transportation, etc., for each available property. Properties range anywhere from one acre to 100 plus acres. The majority of our zone, as I mentioned, is agriculture, but it contains businesses like the Manel Milling Company, as their corporate headquarters are located within the zone, as well as approximately 127 other businesses. Next slide, please. On the screen are some of our zone demographics. On the next three slides, I will be showing you three available properties within the zone that have been identified. I believe these three properties will show you the diversification that we have available within the zone. Next slide, please. This particular property is over 36 acres and zoned for residential. It has two road frontage and sits right next to an existing housing development and the local country club and golf course. This site has been approved for housing development. It sits across from one of our 300 acre reservoirs. There is a population of around 15,000 people residing within five miles of this site. It should be noted with this residential property, along with others that we have identified, we have done housing assessments that can be accessed by interested developers to show the need for this type of development within our zone and within our county. Next slide, please. This 25 acres is zoned commercial, and it sits on the edge of Faustoria along one of our main thoroughfares, State Route 12. All utilities are on site. This property, as I mentioned, sits along one of our main thoroughfares and it sees, on average, over 8,000 vehicles a day. This property sees an increase in traffic over the spring and summer months while people traveling to and from Lake Erie. Next slide, please. This particular property 
is only about one and a half acres and has an existing 120,000 square foot building on it. It is zoned for industrial and has rail access. This site, a former lumber mill, has tremendous potential. All utilities are on site, and while the building is currently being used for warehousing, it is a prime location for a potential manufacturing operation with its on-site rail access with the Norfolk Southern Line running directly behind the building. A few items to note about all of our potential sites and buildings within our zone. Everything is within 15 miles of Interstate 75 and the CSX North Baltimore Intermodal Yard. Several identified properties have additional incentives available, including property tax abatements, job creation tax credits, and several others. Next slide, please. What I've shared with you today is just a small sample of what we have to offer within our zone, with the goal today being to demonstrate that we have identified a multitude of potential sites for development and investment. We have developed the literature to help educate and promote all available properties within our zone, and we have also put together profile information for our zone and area for potential, for potential investors to view. I want to thank you all for the opportunity to present today, and I hope that you can see that we as a community, a county, and an opportunity zone are open for business. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Thank you very much. So, Mark, very different than the uh, site that you are, the, the census tract you're investing in, in in Cleveland, and different than Athens that we just heard about. Thoughts? Uh, well done, Renee. Uh, I thought the, the presentation was great. I, I commend your efforts in, in kind of uh, organizing your team and staff and so on and so forth to uh, proactively put packages out there. I think that's really, really smart. I think that one thing that, that came to mind uh, just in your question is that um, is I encourage everyone to kind of really um, understand kind of that an opportunity zone investor does not have to be someone that has several millions of dollars. This could be someone within the community, okay, that I, frankly, I, I think oftentimes in a more rural-based uh, uh, economy, that investor probably might come from that same community, and they, they, they're really trying to uh, shelter gain, right? So a transaction happens, uh, there is a tax event happening, and it could be selling a, a $500,000 building. There's going to be a tax liability that occurs that, um, you know, Renee, your staff could be looking at someone saying, hey, listen, uh, this is how uh, to educate them on the Opportunity Zone. I know that we're going to get into the program later as, as some of the specifics tax-wise, but I think that the generation of, 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 of the lead and the investor um, and maybe this particular instance could really come, you know, within a 50-mile radius of some of those opportunities. Michael? And I really enjoy, too, that to give us the, the varied aspects of the commercial and residential as well as uh, industrial. And, uh, and as, a, as a company, um, we would love to uh, stimulate rural communities through an opportunity zone uh, type of investment. Uh, and also bring the other layers of the various capital uh, resources that we may have. Uh, you know, certainly with the home ownership piece, you know, it's always good too that, uh, you know, that we can stimulate, but we can link in other lines of business like, you know, mortgage financing and what have you. Uh, you, you, you wonder sometimes as to, you know, what comes first uh, or does it happen simultaneously? Uh, and I would be honest that uh, we rely a lot on the developers uh, that we work with uh, to have that consistent vision of the municipality and have sat down with that municipality and have worked through, you know, those dynamics of, you know, what's first and what are the resources and how do you leverage those particular resources. Uh, but we would love to be around the table because we could add that value as to what does that mean from the financing mix. Uh, and once again, just based on our current structure, the residential would be more palatable. But once again, these are things that we're working towards because uh, we understand with this legislation, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create jobs. And jobs is, a, is the cornerstone for redevelopment. Thanks for coming back to that. Jobs.
Final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I applaud you on the balance with uh, commercial, residential, industrial there too. Certainly want to see you know, the opportunity to be putting up factories and other types of businesses that create jobs. Um, I think when, you know, I'll give, a, a, I'll poke at residential just as an example, and that's not really our thing, but when I, when I look at that, I'd say, okay, that is land available for houses. Um, relative to every other parcel the same size in the state of Ohio, why is that one better? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something like, um, you know, you've got a lot of uh, professors who are retiring and want to stay in this area, or there's a housing shortage or something like that. What are the competitive benefits here? On the, um, you know, commercial or industrial, uh, is there a Home Depot or a Lowe's that's looking for a place in this area and this is a build to suit, or are we gonna put up a factory and then try to find someone there? One thing we, we I mean, we're, we're in the middle of buying a company right now. It's a tier one automotive supplier, 150 million in revenue, 200 jobs, and they're not in an opportunity zone. But they're, they're about to be shut down, so we're gonna buy them. We have a few opportunity zones in Ohio. <laughs> we do, so we're, we're gonna move them into an opportunity zone. So in that situation, we have a self-fulfilling prophecy where you know, we put them in an opportunity zone, we create the jobs, and sure, we'll, we'll build a factory for them, and we'll own it for 10 years, and they'll be there, and we can put in our own solar, and all of that kind of stuff. But when that big employer is not available, who wants to go there? So I, I wanna see a flavor of you know what, I, w I want to see some evidence that this is in, um, in demand, that there's short supply of industrial and commercial space there, and what kinds of tenants might want to move into it. That was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Good luck.